This video is really going to be a series of smaller videos strung together where I'm going to kind of go through some of the um, network visibility module installation, uh, just little tidbits of information that I didn't include in the previous video that have kind of come up, talk a little bit about the difference between uh, recommended version and latest version when you're deploying some of these. Um, we'll go through and create an umbrella profile and we'll also go through and show how that if you're not um, using like Cisco remote access solutions and you don't want the AnyConnect VPN client to appear because that's always installed when you roll out the Cisco Secure um, client um, it'll always have the AnyConnect VPN in there if you don't want the, your users to see that because you're not using that feature or something uh, we'll show you how to remove that and then I'm going to add it back in too to show you how to bring it back if you need to Cisco Secure Client, uh, Secure Endpoint module. So when we're rolling out um, Cisco Secure Client using the uh, deployment feature inside of Cisco XDR, there's some options for Secure Endpoint that talk about losing like the recommended or the latest version option. And those can have a significant impact, specifically if the latest version or the recommended version changes, it can force an upgrade to all of your endpoints at once. So you can have 5,000 endpoints, then all 5,000 of them are going to start trying to pull this new updated version down, and that could get kind of exciting inside your network during the middle of the business day. So we're going to show you how to get around that and so that you can also have control over that. So here we are in our XDR control center. We're going to talk a little bit more about making some deployments and understanding the recommended and latest version options. We're going to go to client management. We're going to go to deployments. Open this up. And remember from my previous video, I said you can go up here and create a new deployment, but I always kind of recommend um, making a copy of the XDR default deployment here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, open this up, and I'm going to make a copy. There we go. And we're going to rename it something a little more uh, easy to understand. We're going to call this example of secure endpoint. We're going to go in here next. And we're going to say, you know, this is on the latest version using the cloud management um, default profile. We can keep those the same. And then we get to secure endpoint and we're going to choose a version. So let's hit the drop down here and you're going to see these options in here for latest and recommended. And you can see there's, you know, 824 here and it's also the same down here. And the recommended is 8233 and there's 8230119. 8230119. If you choose either recommended or latest, these two options here, um, if those options change, it'll dynamically push down to all your clients that are using this particular deployment. So if you know, you're using recommended 823.300.30119, and then all of a sudden uh, we say, okay, now the recommended version is this 824 version. Well, every user endpoint is going to start pulling this down immediately. You know? And if you've got 5,000 of those, that can be exciting in the middle of the day. So what you want to do is if you want to avoid that and control when these are upgraded and pushed down, make sure you select the option down here. So don't select the one that says latest or recommended. Select, you know, you can use the recommended, just select it down here without that um, recommended keyword with it. And once you do that, then you'll control when you're going to push it out. All right, so then we can say secure endpoint, and then of course put it in our group here, and I'm going to put it into our... Um, this protect group and if I can click on it and yeah, let's just put it in the audit group so we're in the home lab workstation audit group there and we're gonna click next and uh, next and save and we are good at this point so in our deployment going back to client management deployments you see we have our example of our secure endpoint deployment there and it's using the version we want to use and it doesn't say latest or uh, recommended version and always as I say when I when you're pulling this down and you're installing it um, at the beginning here uh, do the full installer um, that way it doesn't pull everything down through your um, from the cloud 
So the Umbrella profile creation, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a profile for Umbrella. Now Umbrella has often had its own agent that you could put on an endpoint. And now that agent is going to be part of the Cisco Secure Client, and it will be a module inside there. And we'll show you how to create a profile for that and add that into your um, Cisco Secure Client deployment. So here we are. This time we're going to create an umbrella profile in our um, for our deployment package. And right now you can see that I have the two default profiles that come with your XDR solution set. And we're going to make an umbrella profile so that we can have the umbrella agent deployed at the same time that we're going to deploy our secure endpoint. And we're going to be doing it at the same time that we deploy our um, NVM module. So you can see there's a create new button and an upload button. In the case of Umbrella, we want the Upload button. You can see there it is, so clicking on Umbrella, and I'm going to click Next. And what it's saying is I'm going to drag and drop a file to this area here. So our, it's our um, Umbrella Profile file. So what is that? We actually get that right out of Umbrella itself. So here's my Umbrella environment. Where I'm going to go is I'm going to go to Deployments, Roaming Computers, Roaming Client right up here. And then down here it says download module profile. So this is the agent that can be used um, by itself for um, what we're doing. We're going to need this. We're going to download this module profile. We're going to click on that. And it's going to download it for us. And now that that's done, let's go back to Cisco XDR. And I'm going to upload it. So umbrella, click Next. And I'm going to drag what I just downloaded. It is actually an org.info.json file. So it's org.info.json. In this particular case, it downloaded to my downloads directory. But that's actually the name of the file when it gets there. So let's go ahead and click Next. And org.info.json is a terrible profile name. So we're going to change this to Umbrella. We're going to spell it correctly. So that is our new profile name and upload. And there you can see an umbrella profile that we just created. Now how do we use this? We're going to jump back over to client management deployments. And here's our example deployment we just made a little bit a while ago in this particular video. Let's create an entirely new one again but remember what I said you're going to use the XDR default deployment make a copy of that And let's edit the name. We're going to call this example deployment with, and let's go with secure endpoint and umbrella. All right, so there's the cloud management piece. That's the default one that we're going to keep um, from our basic NVM uh, deployment there. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. Remember what I talked about in the last video about this. We're going to select the one so that we can control which one's getting pushed down to us. And I'm looking for my home lab. That's all set. And then I click Next. And it has these options. You know, the Dart tool is always in there. The network visibility module with a def default profile that comes with um, our XDR deployment. And I'm going to add Umbrella and choose my umbrella profile that I just created. And as you can see, since there's a drop down, you can make multiple ones of all of these if you need to. But let's go ahead and click Save. All right, we're good to go. Let's go to Client Management, Deployments, and we should see it there. Example Deployment with Secure Endpoint and Umbrella. In our next um, video, we're probably going to install this and show you some other key little features with it as well. So Cisco Secure Client, we're going to remove the AnyConnect module visibility from the Cisco Secure Client on an endpoint. It doesn't actually get rid of the VPN piece to it, but it makes it um, invisible to a user. Uh, we're doing this because if there's a scenario where you're not actually using um, Cisco ASAs or FTDs for your um, remote access. You're using another vendor, another product set. Um, we're going to show you how to make that invisible to your endpoint users so they don't, you know, think they're supposed to click on it or have access to it or anything. We're going to show you how to remove that. 
So here's an interesting scenario we're going to talk about. Let's say you have uh, Cisco XDR, so you've installed the network visibility module on your Windows 10 endpoint here that we're currently showing. Um, and you also have secure uh, endpoint on there and an umbrella on there. But let's say you're not using the AnyConnect VPN here. Let's say that uh, you're using a different set of firewalls, so you don't need AnyConnect. But you can't get rid of it. When you created your deployment, this was added by default. You need your secure endpoint. You need your umbrella. You got your network visibility module. You got your cloud management module. But you don't want this on here. You don't want this confusing any of your users or anything. Can we remove this? Well, we can't really remove it, but we can make it invisible. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this profile XML file here and make it big enough so you can see the whole thing. If um, You can actually download this from Cisco, but you can see what it is. And the important part here is under client initialization, you can see the service disable is true. So that's what's important to add in here. So I'm going to close this out. See so if you actually need to create this yourself, you can just go ahead and write it. Take a screenshot. It's not that big to create. Or you can find it on Cisco's website. But what we're going to do with it is we are going to open up Explore, or a file explorer here. We're going to go to C, Program Data, Cisco, Cisco Secure Client, VPN, and Profile. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop this VPN Disable Profile in here. Yep, move over there, please. And here's the full name of it. In fact, it actually ends. It's an XML file. So if you're going to look at the entire thing, um, it's going to be VPN disable underscore service uh, profile dot XML if you were to look at the entire file name. And you saw what was in it. I showed you that earlier. OK, now we put that in there. So this should um, automatically be gone now, right? Well, not quite. It's actually still there. What we're going to do is we're going to close it. Boom, close it out. And I'm just going to go in here and open it back up again. Or you could reboot entirely. But if I open up Cisco Secure Client now, bang, it's gone. You know, still be talked about here, of course. But uh, yeah, you don't see that anymore. So that's it. End of this video. So Cisco Secure Client adding the AnyConnect module um, visibility back in for the um, AnyConnect VPN in the previous. Uh, video clip we removed that we're going to show you how to add it back in if for some reason you want to add it back in if you switch over to using the Cisco AnyConnect um, VPN module for your remote access VPNs we will make it visible there so the question came up after I demonstrated this just a minute ago is that um, well what if you actually want it back what if you did that and you want to actually add it back in can we add it back in real easy you know because we removed that AnyConnect um, module up there? Well, yes you can. You just do the same thing in reverse. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go to, um, oh, we don't want to go there. We want to go to C, Program Data, Cisco, Cisco Secure Client, Virtual Private Network, Profile, and we're just going to move that out of there. Or you can just delete it, you know, however you want to do it. I'm removing it out of there. And then, of course, let's start this over once again. Or, like I said, you could reboot if you want it. And then let's go back into it. So. Cisco, Cisco Secure Client, and it should be back for us. There it is. Hope this was helpful.